Jürgen, how did these three points get away from you today in the end? Oh, well, it was our own fault then. So, um, so I don't think that anybody can expect that a, that a team plays like West Brom tonight in the first half, like a 6-4 or whatever it was. So I think we did okay. To be honest, we scored a goal, uh, didn't give anything away, especially no set pieces. Um, and second half, obviously, we didn't do exactly the same again. They had already in the first five minutes of the second half, they had like three counter attacks. We gave, um, we gave them easy, simple corners. I don't think too many free kicks, but corners, um, too many. And that was actually the only thing they wanted to have tonight, and we gave it away. So that's our fault, and that's why um, it's only one point instead of three. Andy Robertson says that you were slack as a team in the second half. Why do you feel that was? Oh, it's, it's an incredible challenge eh? to, to, to stay active, to stay lively, when you constantly face ten men. Um, um, and, but to be fair, the, um, West Brom did that. They did the job exactly 90 minutes. Exactly, we were one it up, and they didn't change a little bit. And um, so, how is that? The West Brom deserved the point tonight because we didn't finish the game. We didn't have enough clear-cut chances. Um, it is difficult to create. Well, it's a busy period. All that stuff. A lot of games we played. All that's all an, ex an, an explanation. But um, in the end, I think everybody knows and feels like we should have and could have done better tonight, and then we would have won the game. So it's a draw. We spoke before the game, didn't we, about it being a particular kind of challenge. When you look back over the 90 minutes at whole, particularly the first half, is that where you should have really taken the game, do you feel? Yeah, but look, the first half, we, we prepare a team and we have had to actually what, can, what could be really used. Aston Villa, Sam was, I think, three or four days in charge before that game, so you use it, but he then has a week to prepare the game. So, And it was obviously they played different against Villa. Um, today it was... What was clear is they will be defensive um, and go for set pieces. And um, so, um, <laughs> when it's when it clicks in a game and you cannot plan clicking, you just have to work for it. When it clicks in a game, then you pass two, three balls. We had in the first half. <laughs> when it's when it clicks in a game and you cannot plan like this, um, that that's that's all. That's like how you should have to do it. But second half, we didn't have it anymore that much, and um, we just played around. When we crossed the ball, when we were standing, instead of moving, we didn't switch and accelerate. There were a lot of things we didn't do anymore. So, how is that? Um, it's not, <laughs> it's not a game um, we will talk about um, in 20 years. But um, it's um, a game we had to play, and we didn't play it as good as we could. You lost Joel Matip as well, didn't you, in the second half? How is he? Don't know. Don't know yet. He felt he's a doctor, um, and um, don't know more. Okay. Jürgen, appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. We can understand this frustration. He was very honest in his yeah. assessment. Though. I think it was easy to um, see the, today's game, wasn't it? Frustration was very honest in his yeah. assessment. Though. I think it was easy to um, see the, today's game, wasn't it? The failings in the second half were completely different from the first half. The first half, I think Andy Robertson crossed the ball in from wide areas three or four times, flashing it across the, the penalty area. Trent Alexander-Arnold, that side of the pitch, flashing him across the danger area. Second half, they were from 20, 30 yards deeper which is easier to defend. Um, Liverpool were a different side in the second half when really they should have kept on and kept on and just control this game. They could have had the control and they could have been much better. They didn't necessarily have to be more clinical. They just fell into a trap of conceding errors and switching off thinking, oh, it's just, it's just too easy, this. Can that happen against a team who adopt that approach? Like Jurgen Klopp said, it's not easy to stay active against no, a team that's sitting back. There was a lack in a, of movement off the ball second half, and it was ironic. They did play with a, a six and a four first half, but they actually had a little bit more energy and shifted the ball quicker first mm. half, and consequently had, you know, got in behind yeah. a couple of times. Suddenly, like, Grant goes up front for, for West Brom, and they do play a little bit, little bit more open, and they found it harder to get yeah. in, which was yeah. strange. They, they weren't quite at it today. And as I said earlier, I think they've got to look for movement on the outsides and it not coming from your fullbacks. I think there's times when you have a wide man and then the fullback goes and makes movement off that. And I think you'll find you're getting behind. And I think it might be something that Jurgen will look at that tape because it, there'll be other teams that are going to do yeah, that. I was yeah. just about to say that. Yeah, this isn't yeah. going to be a one-off. No, it? there's other teams that are going to do it. And I think they're going to look at it and say, well, sometimes we have to play slightly different. It's not, a, it's not massively different. It's just a couple of good movements in the last third when you know you're going to have the ball and you're going to go back time and time again. Like first half, it was, 
it was like a practice match. Mm. What we say, forwards against defence. You know, Steve, you'd have done it many times yeah, on yeah. training pitch. Managers do it to see if you can defend and get overnumbered and, and, and defend that way. And it was just like a training session. It really was. West Brom had nowhere to go when they actually got the, got the ball in that, in that defensive third. And they had a really good goalkeeper behind them. So they fancied their chances mm. playing like that. Talking of defending, you heard him ask there about Joel Matip. It didn't look good. Nope. And that is another frustration of the day with no Van Dijk, no Gomez. No Gomez, and yeah. And now maybe a period with no Matip as well. Well, it is going to be a period with no Matip. What, judging by his reaction here, you know, this is not something that's just been slow to, to, to come on. This is just happens instantly, isn't it? And normally that's, that's, that's a while. He, he, even in the best case scenario, if he pulled his adductor or anything like that, you know, it's it's a good month off, isn't it? So, I mean, he's and the fact that he's quite uh, brittle himself, he's missed lots of games, hasn't Maybe he? Through injuries. No, was it his back before? Was it his back the problem? Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think he's had problems yeah. everywhere. That, to be honest, that wouldn't when, surprise me if that's not connected to you. It, you know, most of your problems yeah. with your back, you, you end up with a groin or you end up with a hamstring. Calf, it was Kevin but, Friendly brought the brunt of Jurgen's uh, yeah. frustration, which ended with a yellow card, Michael. Yeah, well, you can see the frustration and why. I mean, it was a nothing challenge, but in his interview before the game, he just he does mention Jürgen how it'll be stop start the game, how they will try and slow the game down, and this is exactly what they were doing. So this wasn't a surprise. The surprise is his reaction, really. I mean, whether it was a foul or not is immaterial, is it? You just get on with it. I mean, I, I think that's the frustration yeah. of his team playing the way they were second half, and he knows he, deep down he doesn't like the way West Brom was set up and the way no. they were playing. Because it was hurting football, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But I think he took it out on he took it out on the referee. The referee yeah. All his frustrations just vented. I've been down there. I know it does happen. And uh, and he rightly so. He got booked. I can't imagine you, <laughs> Glenn Hardle, getting frustrated. <laughs> uh, Jurgen Klopp was. Sam Allardyce won't be. Here's his thoughts. Your game plan worked out rather well in the end. Uh, yes, I thought the lads are superb today. I think that um, uh, there's a lot of. Um, Defending you have to do against such a quality team and uh, such a team with such a fantastic home record, of course. And, uh, and I think to the man, we uh, uh, certainly frustrated Liverpool as much as we possibly could. We had to try and take the sting out of him in the first half, so it was really back to the wall. The last 20 minutes, we changed it a little bit by putting Granty up front to give us a little bit of an out ball. Um, we felt that was going to work better in the second half, and certainly. Second half uh, performance, not only defensively but also in possession, got us more and more up the pitch. And I think that uh, not only the goal from uh, Shemi, the, the Grant one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, you know, would have put us back level. So uh, we had two really good opportunities to score, a lot of good final third entries in the second half, which we didn't get in the first half. and. Um, came up off with a very precious point for us. I mean, there must have been a sense of relief that you were still in the game at half-time because they scored early, which is obvi obviously the last thing True. that you would have wanted. I mean, yeah. at times, it was hard to stay in the game, wasn't it? I mean, they really t took the game to you in that opening 45. Well, Liverpool, I would take the game to you. I mean, what I'd, I'd say is, if you look at the shots on target count, I wouldn't think Liverpool's was that high. So, I didn't see Sammy in goal, Sam in goal under enormous pressure making world state world class saves today so that shows us how well we contained the pressure up and into the 18 yard box and of course when the firing balls into the box it, it, towards the end that's even even much, sometimes more difficult to uh, to defend against but we did that very well and i think that um, you know everybody will start going on about probably saying about how lucky we are again but that wasn't just luck that was good application by the players and taking an opportunity that that came their way at the other end and uh, I'm really pleased for the boys great a great header for the goal by the way yeah and at the other end your goalkeeper as you say wasn't constantly peppered um, by the Liverpool attack but he did have to make one world-class save at the end there didn't oh. he at that point right at the end there well, it was a fantastic save it's though, unbelievable wasn't it? save isn't it but only having to make one world-class save here on the top of the league and we're at the bottom, come on. I mean, that's we've done a brilliant job and the goal is there to make that one save if we need him. If we'd have asked him to make five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten saves, they'd have probably won 4 nil. Maybe 4-1, who knows. But we, we did our job defending our goalkeeper, defending our box really well. 
when the goalie was asked to come up with a save and he's top class, um, he did do and that's obviously got us a very precious point. Oh, we should point out, Glenn, that no one in this studio has mentioned the word luck. No, with no. Albion today. Whether he feels he's um, going to get some criticism, but 